Hi, welcome to Achieve Maximum Effectiveness. This is our fifth video, and it's on doing amazing sales presentations. A Kangaroo Fern Production. This is based on my experience of having seen a lot of sales presentations, having coached a lot of people through sales presentations, and having been subjected to a lot of sales presentations from other people trying to sell me things. And today I'm gonna to run through in the next few minutes three tips. And here's what I'm gonna to say to you. You're gonna hear these three tips, and you're going to say, wow, Paul, that's not exactly rocket science. And I'll tell you what, it isn't rocket science. As a matter of fact, when I do sales courses and sales presentations or teach sales to people, I usually open up with this line, which is there's nothing new in sales. And you know what? There really isn't anything new in sales. People have been selling, I assume, ever since uh, the first uh, cave person tried to trade a couple of shells for a goat or who knows what. All selling really is, is influencing others to achieve a transaction that should work for a mutual benefit. I think the way sales is often taught a lot of the time, it's a highly regimented, highly scripted, highly in your face, highly don't take no for an answer type environment. And I think that turns a lot of people off. Some people have a, a negative connotation with the word sales, and that connotation is, oh, the, 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 the old cliched foot in the door encyclopedia salesman. Great sales has got absolutely nothing to do with that. So let me give you my three tips on delivering amazing sales presentations, and I can promise you they have nothing to do with foot in the door tactics, I can promise you they work, and I can promise you that if you do this stuff consistently, it will be quite unlike what most people you're probably competing with are doing. My first tip on delivering amazing sales presentations is to make sure you ask lots of questions. Common mistake I see is someone will come in and they'll be ready to do a sale and let's say they're selling, a, well, it could be anything, let's say they're, they're selling a, a contract to service a machine. And the person charged with doing the sales, either whether they do it over the phone or online or whether they come face to face and have the meeting, they'll be armed with a, a mountain of information, they'll be armed with a presentation which the company has signed off on and approved that they, they can deliver. And you know these sort of presentations, the way they tend to go, it's a lot of show and tell. Here's my presentation, look at this, look at that, look at that, and you're reading features and benefits to a prospect, someone that you're trying to sell to. Generally it doesn't work, and the reason it doesn't work is because people get pretty bored listening to you bang on about yourself the whole time. If you really want to engage someone, you need to talk about them. The best way to do this is to ask questions. There's a lot of other benefits to asking questions as well. The more you ask a business owner or a decision maker in a business about their business and what they do and what their role is and what they need, the more likely you're gonna understand what it is you can do for them. People are very interested in talking about what they do. Most people's favorite subject is themselves and so it should be because they're passionate. This person that you're selling to, as I said, they're a business owner or they're a decision maker in a business. They're, they're someone who has the, has the power to approve whatever it is you're trying to sell to them. They, they're passionate about what they do. They're successful. And what they do is interesting to them and it should be interesting to you because if you're interested in providing a product or a service to that person, then you need to understand what it is they do and how your product or service can fit. Asking lots of questions is important. In a typical sales presentation, I see this salesperson doing 60% or more of the talking. It absolutely should be the other way around. In fact, I think a good balance is maybe 20 to 30% of the salesperson talking and 70 to 80% of the, the, the client or the prospect talking. Very, very critical. Ask questions, ask lots of questions. The more questions you ask, the more information you have, the more the person you're talking to is going to enjoy the conversation because you're giving them a chance to talk about what it is they do. I hope you've liked what you've viewed so far. Make sure you never miss an episode by clicking the subscriber button now. This show is made possible by you and we really want to thank you for your support. Second point, 
listen to the answers. So again, I've seen a lot of people who've learned a sales process or, or learned a way of selling, and you know, their company might say, well, these are the five questions that you need to ask when you visit a client. Now, I actually don't think there's anything wrong with that because having a structure and understanding what the questions are that you want to ask is the key to getting the information you need to get to help you interact with that client and to help you successfully sell whatever it is you're selling. But the mistake we make is we ask the questions, but we're not really listening to what we're being told. Or when we've gone to our sales course and we've learned the particular script and we ask, you know, tell me what are the, what are the five things that would uh, most increase revenue in your business or whatever it is you're asking your prospect. If they answer in a way that doesn't suit the way we learned it in the training course or doesn't go to a particular script, we can, we can kind of get lost. Oftentimes in the answers, your, your client or your prospect, they're giving you a lot of clues as to what some things that they might actually need. But if you're not attuned to actually listening to what they're saying, if you're too busy thinking about what you want to say next, and you're not really, or you're just taking notes, but you're not really listening to what it is they're telling you, you absolutely can and will miss opportunities. You know, I've seen examples where you know a client's gone a bit off the off the script, and, and they've said something like, "Oh yeah, um, you know, in the finance industry where I come from, they'll they'll start to talk about a holiday they're going on or whatever. They get off on a tangent, and I've seen the salesperson get frustrated and try and get them back on. Let them talk about the holiday because the holiday will have some sort of need attached to it. If you let, you know they're excited about it, get excited about it with them, and you know you'll learn from that. There's, there's probably a a need you can fulfil. That, that will actually help them and make their holiday better. That's in the world of finance, but it could apply equally to if you're selling anything, really. It really doesn't matter what it is. Ask questions, listen to the answers. Third point, when you do come up with solutions for the client, and I'm not saying sales, I'm deliberately using the word solutions, match the solutions to the need the client has articulated when you ask the questions and that you heard when you listened to the answers. So when you're doing your presentation, you've gathered all this information and you think, yeah, I, I know what this client needs, they, they need this pen. When you're selling them that pen, it's absolutely important that as you present the pen, instead of having your 20-page your flip chart or slideshow on the pen and how beautifully it writes and how nice it feels in your hand and how good the ink is and how it doesn't smudge, if the client didn't express an interest in any of those things, that information's irrelevant. Take yourself off your sales script and think about what did the client tell me? What did they say to me that means this is the right pen for them? And then when you're selling the pen, you can say, well, Mr. Smith, you mentioned the fact that you get very frustrated when your pens run out of ink. Well, this pen will actually last 20% longer. So the price might be 5% more, but ultimately you're saving 15% in costs. Obviously a very simple made up example, but the point is your solution that you present after considering what the client told you when you listen to them must relate to what they told you. If you are selling to features and benefits that the client is not interested in, they will lose interest in you very, very quickly. And I can give you a recent example that happened to me. I was buying a television and you know I had certain things that I wanted and when I went and spoke to the, the salesperson on the shop floor about the TV, where I thought I was going to go and where I ended up going were two completely different places. And the reason for that was because he started out just by asking me a lot of questions. So I turned up and I said, yeah, I want this TV. It's got to be this size and, and this price range. And I hadn't thought much more about it. He asked me what I like to watch. Do I watch Netflix? Do I, would I like to watch uh, sports apps on my TV? Do I stream? And when I answered his questions, he actually listened. Then he turned around and said, okay, well, I actually think this TV is the best one for you because here's all the things it does. And all the things it did were all the stuff related to all the things I like to do. It was hassle-free, it was the right size, it was the right price. It enabled me to get online and watch the, the sports streaming services and the, um, you know, things like Netflix that I like to watch with it in a very easy way. And guess what? That TV was a little bit more expensive than what I intentionally or intended to spend when I walked in. But I didn't mind because he was able to create the value for me. So that's what great sales is all about. So an amazing sales presentation in summary, very, very simple. There's only three things you need to do. One, ask lots of questions. Two, listen to the answers. 
Three, make sure your presentation, after you've gathered that information, relates to the questions and the answers. It's relevant to what the client told you. Thank you very much for listening. Good luck with your sales presentations and chat to you again soon. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell when you're notified when a new episode's posted. If you found value in this show, please review this episode and share it with your friends. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out to us.